What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel and to another weekly 3D model. This week we are going to be making a wind farm, or a windmill house. I wasn't sure exactly how to call it, but I found this awesome reference online from an artist named Hamish Freider. He created this awesome wind farm and I honestly just couldn't resist but wanting to create one for myself. So I decided to throw away my weekend plans once again and recreate this model for this week's video. So thank you Hamish for creating an awesome piece of art and inspiring this week's video. And if you want to see any of his work or this reference, all of it will be linked in the description below. And just before we get started, please consider subscribing to the channel. And if you want to see this whole video in a real time pace, as well as get access to the working files, all of that will be uploaded to my Patreon, which you can find in the link in the description below. All right, let's just get started. So to start this thing off, we are gonna select a cube and we can start blocking out our main shapes. Now, I wasn't really sure how I was gonna approach this model, so I was more or less just gonna wing it along the way. So what I decided to do was use a few cubes to start blocking out those main rooms. That way, once everything's blocked out, I can start adding in my small little wood planks and I can position those around these cubes. It's just gonna make my life a little bit easier. Now this is obviously going to add a lot of polys into the scene, so if polys are important, so if this is going into a video game or something, you could easily just use this cube as the walls. And then in Substance Painter you can add that paneling effect just into the texture and you don't have to add a ton of polys into the scene. Now obviously you're going to get a bit better results, at least in my opinion, if you can add those details directly into the geometry, so that's what we're going to do. We are just going to use these cubes to mainly block out everything and then afterwards we can add those small little wood pieces all around these cubes. So I went ahead and blocked out the floor as well and now we have our main house shapes blocked out. So we need something to hold all of these shapes up so we can start building out our frame. So I'm going to add another cube and start blocking out one of these main frame rectangle pieces. So I'm just going to position this underneath my little house structure. Now before I start duplicating this thing a bunch of times, I'm going to go ahead and quickly UV it. So after I delete my history and center my pivot and freeze transformation, I'm going to go up to UV and do an automatic UV. Now yes, this is probably the laziest route I could have done to UV this object, but to be honest with you, this rectangle is barely going to be in scene, and I don't want to also spend my full weekend modeling this little wind tower, windmill, or wind farm. Either way, it's just going to really make my process a little bit quicker. So we're going to use that automatic UV and then I can add a small bevel to those edges and then I can start duplicating it a bunch of times to create my other floor frames. Alright, so next up is just building out the main tower that's going to hold up this whole little windmill house. So I'm going to add in another cube and I can scale out a long rectangle. And similar to the other little frame pieces we did, I'm going to add a small bevel to those edges and then I can start UVing this object. Because I'm going to duplicate it a bunch of times and I want to save myself that extra work, going ahead and just UVing it is just going to save me that extra time. Now instead of doing the automatic UV that we did before, this time I'm not going to be as lazy and I'm going to use the 3D Cut and Sew UV tool. Now I usually use this tool for all of my UVing in all of my models and I highly recommend it if you don't already use it. But what I'm going to do for this one is just a camera based projection to remove all of the cuts on the object and then using that 3D cut and sew UV tool I can go in and start making my own cuts. Now once those cuts are made I can control U to unfold them and control L to lay them out in my UV editor. And once everything is aligned nice and straight, I can go ahead and start duplicating this one little structure piece over a bunch of times to create my other tower pieces. I also want to build my other small tower supports, so I'm just going to duplicate the same rectangle piece we have, and I can just scale that nice and small and then position that to help support my upper frame. We don't want this house to tip over. Now of course I will have to go back into my UV editor and unfold these UV shells. Because I scaled them nice and small, those UV shells are going to be very stretched. But because I already made those cuts, this is just going to make my life a little bit easier later on when I have to go and clean up all of these UV shells. So next up is just creating more tower supports. So this time we're going to make a small cube and we can scale that nice and small and basically insert it right where those two tower structures are intersecting. I want to act as if some little block piece is helping hold the structure together. 
This time we're gonna add a few edge loops and that way I can delete those inner faces and I can make this wood piece go around these two frame structure pieces. And once everything is sitting nice, we can go ahead and select those inside edges and I can just bridge them together. I don't want any open holes into this piece of geometry. And then I can add a small bevel on the back. I wanna round out those back edges. And then I can add another small bevel to the other edges on this object. I think everything looks better with a small bevel. And let's not forget some small screws. We need something to hold these pieces together. So let's add a cylinder and we can scale that nice and small to fit onto our small piece of wood. And then you probably guessed it, we're gonna add a small bevel to those outside edges. Now I am gonna duplicate this a few times since I wanna have more than one bolt or screw holding this piece of wood together but I did forget to UV the very first bolt before duplicating it. Now, luckily, this is just a simple cylinder, so I don't have to add any cuts. They are already there from when I just added my cylinder into the scene. So we're just gonna select all of those bolts in my UV editor, and I can just highlight or select all of those UV shells and do a control U to unfold them. Because they are the same shape and the cuts are in the same place, all of those UV shells will just be stacked on top of one another and it just makes my life a little bit easier. And let's not forget about our other small little structure piece. So we can do a camera based projection to remove all of the cuts. And then once again, using our 3D cut and sew UV tool, I can go ahead and create my cuts wherever I want them, unfold those UV shells and I can position them nicely in my UV editor. Now, as you can see, the topology is not looking that clean. And before I start duplicating it over a bunch of times, I want to make sure that my main shape is looking correct. So we're just really quickly going to just delete or remove some of these edges. And then I can very quickly using that multi cut tool, just attach some of those vertices together. And then I just have a cleaner shape to work with and the topology is looking a little bit better. And then we can start duplicating it over a bunch of times. It's always quicker and easier to clean up your shapes first before duplicating them. And sometimes I have a problem remembering that myself. And it just leads to me doing extra work. Now let's not forget to unfold those UV shells and then we can lay them out in our UV editor and just change the orientation so they're nice and straight and they don't take up any unnecessary room. And once the shells are looking nice, we can just move those to the side and we will come back to them later. All right, so next up is building our windmill. Now this is gonna be very similar to all of the other objects in our scene. We are gonna start off with a cube and we can start building out that main windmill shape, the main frame structure that's gonna hold up our cloth. So I'm gonna insert a cube and I can start scaling that main long piece to see roughly how long I want my windmill blade to be. And then we can start adding in those smaller little cube rectangle pieces everywhere to start roughly blocking out our windmill. Now, to be honest, I didn't really know how this whole blade structure worked. From the reference photo I was using, it didn't even have the full blade in the scene, but we're just gonna kind of create it ourselves and imagine how this blade fits together. Luckily, I do have some reference to work with, so I'm not completely going into it blindly, but we are just gonna roughly play with these shapes until we get something that we're happy with. So I just continue to duplicate those small rectangles over and over again until I have this rough blade shape that I'm happy with. So next up is just creating that main cloth shape that really makes this whole windmill blade come together. So for this, we are gonna add a small plane into our scene and that will act as our cloth material. And then we can position that directly in front of those wood pieces. So all I'm gonna do here is just add a few edge loops. Now, I'm not gonna go too crazy. It's a lot easier to work with in low polys. And then once we're happy with the whole shape, we can smooth it out and it can look much more cloth-like. So I'm just gonna play around with these vertices and move them to different points along this blade so it looks like it's attached to these pieces of wood. All right, so our windmill blade is looking good. Now we're gonna come back to it after, but we wanna move on to the other pieces of this windmill structure. We need to add all of those electrical components or those large pieces that allow this blade to spin. Now, once again, I don't really know what we're gonna do here, so we're just gonna kind of wing it along the way and just add some pieces that make sense. So we're just gonna start adding in some cylinders and some cubes and we can start blocking out some rough shapes to help attach this blade to our windmill. 
So not only do we have to build out these front shapes, which look pretty good as is for now, we also have to swing around to the other side and build out the other components. Now luckily I can see these shapes in my reference, not very up close, but the general shape. So we're actually going to use that as our guide and we can start blocking out those other components that help spin this windmill. All right, so I just continued adding some different shapes, mainly just cylinders to act as different shaft line components. And I did decide to delete a face on my actual building structure. It's just going to help me figure out how I want these wood paneling pieces to fit. I want the shaft line to kind of be inside of the house to look like it's this whole wall structure is built around this shaft line. Its main purpose is this windmill, so it's really structured around it. And I like the idea of having it cut out into the building. So all I'm going to do is just add a small plane so we can add our little rubber fan belt like piece that helps these shaft lines spin. And once again, keeping the shape very in low polys, I can just extrude that edge. And then once I'm happy with that blocked out shape, I can hit three to preview smooth it and I can make sure it fits nicely around these cylinders. And then lastly, I'm just going to finish off this whole shaft line structure by just adding some end piece. So I'm just going to extrude some faces from the cylinder and I can pull them right to the ground to help support the structure. And then I can just quickly extrude some of these edges to give it some shape. All right, so now that our main shaft line components are blocked out, I just want to move back to our main house object. I need to add some doors so our little person can actually get into this house. So all I'm going to do is just add some edge loops to these objects and then I can just delete those faces to add some doors or start blocking out where I want those doors to go. All right, so now that we have an entrance to our building, I just need to start working on the roof. So all I'm going to do is just reuse one of my frame wood pieces I already have created on my tower. And then I can start blocking out where I want the roof to go. I'm going to start working on the lower roof portion first. I want those little wood frame pieces to stick out from the actual roof metal panels. So we're going to start scaling those and positioning those onto my roof. So now that we have our roof frame in position, we can start adding our small metal roof pieces. So for this, I'm going to create a cube. I can scale that nice and thin, and then I just need to add some edge loops. I didn't really know how I was actually going to go about this. I was originally just going to create nice simple planes and add that ripple or metal effect into the texture when we jumped into Substance Painter. But I thought it would look cool if we added some lines and made it kind of pointy or a wave pattern throughout this wood panel piece like some roof pieces have. It looks actually similar to that in our reference, so I thought that would be a good idea. So we're just going to add a few edge loops and I can select those edges and I can give it that sharp pointy effect. Now I could have just left this in low poly, but I find it does look better if we smooth it out so those edges look nice and rounded, not so sharp. So I'm just going to select those edges and give them a very small bevel and then we can preview smooth it by hitting three on our keyboard. Now I do go ahead and start duplicating these metal roof pieces, but I really should have just UV'd one ahead of time. So this just really creates extra work for myself down the road. All right, so now that one of the roofs are complete, we can just move on to some of those wall pieces. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I don't want to keep these walls as simple planes. I thought it'd be fun to add that wood paneling directly into the geometry. So we need to build up one of our small wood panels and then we can duplicate that over to create all the other ones. So what we're going to do is just create a small cube. I can scale that into a thin rectangle and I can position that on my wall. Now we don't need those back faces, so I'm just going to simply delete that back face since we don't need it. And then I can add a small bevel to those edges. Now we don't want to forget those UVs before we start duplicating these wood panels. So once again, I'm going to be lazy and use that automatic UV. And I'm just going to go in and remove the cuts that are on the edges since there's no back faces. It can just be one UV shell. And then I can start duplicating it along my wall. Now obviously because I'm going to be changing the height of some of these wood panels, those UVs will be skewed and they will be stretched. So it's important to select all of those panels and I can unfold them in my UV editor. And then I can move those shells to the side. That way I can select all of these wood panels that are creating half of my wall and I can just duplicate them to create the other half. 
and some of those UV shells will just be overlapping and it's just going to save me time when I move on to those textures and it's also going to save me room on my UV map. All right, so I just went ahead and duplicated more wood panels to wrap around my whole house. And then I also duplicated those roof metal pieces as well. And I went ahead and just UV'd them. I basically did a cut directly in the middle for one for the top and one for the bottom. And I made sure to shrink my bottom shell since it's not going to be in the scene much or at all. Now I didn't delete them because some of the metal pieces are going to be overhanging like off of my roof. And I want to be able to see that geometry from underneath. But it's not important that you see that material or that texture. It's going to be in shadow anyways. So I made sure just to shrink down that shell. Now I also thought it would just increase the cool factor of this model if I also took some of those little metal pieces and I just offset them basically stacked them on top of the roof to act as if those little metal pieces are kind of nailed on to help cover certain areas because it's damaged or something just to make it more interesting to look at. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to start basically duplicating some of these metal pieces and I can start positioning them and skewing them off of one another so they don't look perfectly aligned. So the roof is looking much better now and I made sure just to work on one side because we can just simply duplicate it to create the other side afterwards. But I made sure to leave one little hole in my roof for a little roof window. In the reference it had a small little window on the roof that was being held up or opened by a little piece of stick or a wood and I really love that idea. It just was fun to look at and I thought it would add a lot to the model by adding that roof window. I'm not exactly sure what people call them. I think they're called skylights. Anyways. I thought it'd be fun to add. So I'm simply just going to add a small cube to act as that window frame and I can just block out that simple shape and I can make my little skylight. All right, so next up was just creating a small door for our house. Now it's important to have a door. I think we don't want intruders coming in and it probably gets pretty windy up here. So we don't want to have large openings to our house. So what we're going to do is just reuse those wood pieces we already have created and I can start blocking out a small door for my house. So next up we just need to create some small windows. Right now there's absolutely no light and it would be very dark inside this home. So what we're going to do is add a small cube and we can start blocking out those little windows that we're going to add onto our walls. Now to save time, I don't want to create an interior to this home. So what we're going to do is just create a plane to act as the glass and we're not going to make it too transparent. That way you're not going to be able to see through the windows into the inside. We can just add some dirt and grunge on top of it and make it quite reflective. So next is just creating the inside floor. Now I'm not going to pay too much attention to this since you're not going to see much of the interior but you can see the entrance and we don't want to fall through the floor because that wouldn't be good. So what we're going to do is just reuse one of those wood panels from the side walls and then we can just position those on the floor. All right, so next up is just blocking out a railing. We need some sort of guardrail, something to help our small people from falling over the edge because safety is important. So what we're going to do is just start blocking out those small railings and then we can position those right beside our door. Now we also need the ability to climb up to this house, otherwise it's pretty useless. So we need to add a small cutout into our floor. So I'm just going to add a few edge loops and I can delete some of those faces and we can create a small opening that you can climb up into. Now we also need a ladder, so I'm just going to reuse those railings we created earlier. I can duplicate those over, position those where that opening is in my floor, and then I can start blocking out my ladder. So next up was creating some small window planters. I love the idea of having some flowers underneath those windows and we're going to take advantage of Maya's content browser to actually create our flowers later on, but we need a planter to actually hold them. So by starting out with a small cube, I can start blocking out that small planter shape and then I can duplicate it to put underneath my other windows on my house. Now let's not forget about our outside floor. So I'm just going to reuse those same floor panels we have on our interior. And I'm just going to duplicate those over to create the outside floor panel pieces. So I did love the idea of those wires that were coming out the side of the building. So I added a few cubes to block out some extra components that I could use as these windmill shaft line components or components that were used for the motor for spinning this blade. But like I said, I love the idea of those wires. So what I'm going to do is just start blocking out some little small components to act as if some hose or wire that was attached on the side of this object. 
and I'm gonna create this small wire by using an EP curve tool. And I can just draw out those points in roughly the shape I was looking for. And then I can scale that nice and small and start positioning them where I want that wire to go. Once I'm happy with the shape, I can just basically turn that into a sweet mesh to create my wire object and then refine it if needed afterwards. All right, so things are slowly coming together and our windmill house is definitely starting to take shape. Now in my reference, there was a lower level to this whole tower structure. It had a small little platform with a crane and some objects and I really love that idea as well. So I wanted to add that to my scene and rather than just creating everything from scratch, I'm just gonna reuse some of those wood pieces I already created above to hold my whole house. So I'm just gonna duplicate some of those wood structure pieces and I can start blocking out that lower platform. So this platform needs a small electrical box, basically one red and green button to lower and raise the lift so you can bring goods up from the ground. So we're gonna add a small cube and we can start blocking out our small electrical box. I decided to make another EP curve tool and then I can turn that curve into a sweet mesh to create my wire that connects to this electrical box. I also wanted to add a few boxes so I could add some objects to this platform. So I just added some cubes and stacked them into the scene. Now I do need something to lift these boxes up here. So I need to create that small crane. So I'm just gonna use that crane that's in the reference as guidance. I'm just gonna block out some simple shapes and we can create a small little crane lift sort of thing. And I finished it off by adding a few small bevels to these objects and I just called it good for the crane. So I wanted to continue adding more details to this little house. So next up was adding that small antenna that sits on the roof and that's just to help bring electricity and signals to this small little windmill house. Now this is pretty straightforward. I just added a few small cylinders and I blocked out roughly the shape of a small antenna. I didn't want to spend too long on these objects since you would barely see them. I just simplified a lot of these things so I didn't have to drag out the process too much longer. So after the main antenna shape was in place, I wanted to add some small little lights. I wanted to add two that were right above this window on the side of this house and one that was on the very top of the antenna. The idea was to have all of these lights on showing an emissive material in Substance Painter and I can have a glowing light effect coming from these lights. Now these shapes were very straightforward. I tried to keep them very simple. I didn't want to spend too long on them since they're so small. So I just used a few cylinders and I blocked out a small light. So next up was just adding a few extra wood pieces to the house. I thought it would look cool if I just duplicated a few extra wood panels over and I just angled them on the side to look like they were nailed into the wood frame. Basically acting as if it was help holding the structure together. I thought it would just make it look a little bit more interesting to look at. So just like I mentioned earlier when we were working on our windmill blade, I wanted to come back to this to add a little bit more detail. And I thought it would look cool having some rope that was tied around these wood pieces that was helping hold them together. So for this, all I'm gonna do is create a small torus. I can scale that nice and small and then start positioning that around my wood piece. My whole idea was to spend some time working on one of these small rope pieces. And once I was happy with the shape, I can just duplicate it to create all the other ones in the scene. Now I mostly did this with the soft select brush. It just allowed me to select those vertices in a wider area and then I can position those around those rectangle pieces. But I found the longer you spend working on one of them, it just makes duplicating it afterwards a lot easier. All right, so as a final touch, I thought it'd be fun just to basically offset some of these little wood panels. Everything was looking too aligned and I wanted to have some depth between each panel piece. So I basically just randomly selected random pieces of wood and just basically moved them front or backwards depending on how I wanted it to look. That way I can give this whole house structure a little more shape. All right, so here's a model in its finished form. Now I did add those flowers into my scene using Maya's content browser and I did that throughout the UVing process so if you're interested in seeing all of that that will be uploaded to my patreon page i will have this whole video in its full entirety including the full uv mapping process available on there so if you want to check it out it will be linked in the description below 
But I will really quickly go over these UVs and show you exactly how I did everything. Now, I did use the 3D Cut and Sew UV tool that I used earlier in the video, and I just repeated that same process for all the other objects in my scene. Now, I decided to split this whole thing up into five different groups, or sorry, six different groups for the six different textures applied. Now, I wasn't restricted by the amount of textures I can use or the poly count because this wasn't being used in a video game or anything. This was just strictly used for my YouTube channel. However, I didn't want to go too crazy with textures, so I thought six textures would make sense. So what I decided to do for the first texture and group is basically the whole walls and the whole main structure of this house. Now, this could easily been avoided just by adding simple planes like I mentioned earlier. You could just add this paneling effect in Substance Painter directly into the materials. But I thought it would just look cool having that into the geometry, so that's why I broke this thing out into its own group. So this, oh, and let me open up my UV editor so you can actually see how I did this. So I made sure to straighten all of these so it was really easy to stack and take advantage of all of this UV space. And a lot of these are actually using the same space as well. So I didn't want every panel to obviously be taking up the same place. So you would see repeating patterns in those materials. So some of them are overlapping, some of them aren't. It just depends on I basically just randomly selected certain UV shells to move over, but I did try to change some of them so you wouldn't see too many repeating patterns. So the second group and texture is everything else related to the house. So I added all of the roof panel pieces as well as the antenna, the door, and the remaining floor and windows. Now a few things with this roof texture. Once again, I made sure to not have too many of them overlapping because I didn't want to have too many repeating patterns. However, a lot of them are overlapping. So I just made sure to have a few different variations so it looked more interesting in those final materials. And another really important thing, and I definitely cut a few corners. This whole model took a lot longer than I originally planned, so I definitely wanted to save some time. So using Maya's content browser, I did create these flowers, but I didn't UV them. So all I did, and let me show you, is they basically come just sh into the scene as large squares because they're not UV'd correctly. So I selected certain flowers that I wanted to have certain colors, and I moved those shells directly to the side. So as you can see, they're actually not properly UV'd, but I'm not gonna have any detail. I just want plain colors on them. So I just, basically cut corners, move those little square UV shells to different areas. So for example, all of these squares could be green and that would represent all of these green leaves. And these flower pieces up here will be white. So this square, everything related to this square will be white in my scene. I just really simplified it to keep it nice and short since everything else was already taking so much time. So the third group is just the objects. Now, this was really, I didn't really need to put this on its own group. However, I just had the extra space and I thought it would make sense just to take advantage of that space and separate them over into their own group and texture. So this group consists of the objects that are all on this lower platform, the crane, as well as a few other objects up here like the chimney and a few of the wires and lights. Now I did add a few extra objects, maybe not in the whole video on YouTube, but all of these other objects that I added are in the full real-time video that will be uploaded to my Patreon. So I did add the small cloth using the end cloth in Maya and a passive collider on this pole. And I just dropped a cloth on to add a few extra objects as well as a little wire here on the floor and a few extra wood panels. So the fourth group and texture is just the whole frame. I put the whole tower or frame structure together in its own group. And once again, just trying to straighten all of these shells as well as overlapping a lot of them to just save space in my UV map. But I didn't overlap too many of them because I didn't want to have too many repeating patterns. So I did a few things. There's a couple tricks you can do to take advantage. So for example, these four poles are all taking up the same place or same space on my UV map but I didn't want to have repeating textures. So all I did was every one of these poles is just rotated and or flipped around 
That way, this face over here is not going to be the same spot on this. These are actually flipped, so if I have a material down here, it will be showing up here. And for example, this face is not in the same place as it is on this object because I just rotated this uh, rectangle around. So there's little tricks you can do to try to avoid those repeating patterns, and I tried to do that in this tower. And the fifth group and texture, I basically split this windmill into two groups. So one group was for all of the components that were attached to this whole frame structure piece. And then I also added the remaining windmill piece in its own group. Now this is obviously these three big windmill blades are all the exact same UV space. It's the same object just duplicated three times. But since they're not close into the scene, you're not going to see any of that repeating pattern. Anyways, that is exactly how I UV this object. And once again, if you want to see the whole process and you want to see it all in real time, all of that will be uploaded to my Patreon page, along with this whole working file and this FBX millhouse model. So if you want to see it in your own Maya scene, you can head down to the description and you can check out my Patreon page. All right, so now let's just jump over to Substance Painter and we can start texturing our windmill house. All right, so now jumping over to Substance Painter, we can go ahead and load in our FBX file from Maya. Now, really quickly before we get started, I am going to go up to the right corner to the shader settings and I am going to change the shader to alpha blending. We do want to add an emissive channel to some of these textures so I can add that glowing light onto our little light model in the scene. And I also want my one-sided faces to show up as two-sided in the scene, especially in the editor. I don't want it to be see-through and it's just going to be easier to work with. So once those textures are all baked out, we can go ahead and start texturing our very first group. Now this one is the wood panels around the main house structure. So what I'm going to do is take advantage of those smart materials. So what I decided to use was the ship hull smart material. I thought this was pretty fitting for this model. I really like that wood material. But those knots were showing up pretty large. So what I did was just shrink down those knots and those wood grain textures that show up in the material themselves. And then I can obviously just change that color. So I decided to go with a red that was similar to the reference photo. I like the whole red building kind of vibe it was giving. So I decided to go with something like that. Now, if you can tell, some of my wood panels are horizontal and some are vertical on my UV map. So obviously those wood grains are going to kind of show up sideways on some of those planks. So we do want to fix that. So once I'm happy with the color, I can set that to a black mask, assign it to all the correct panels that are in the correct orientation. And then I can just copy that same group over and then I can change the rotation of all those wood patterns in the other group and then reassign it to the other wood panels in the scene. All right, so now that those wood planks are looking half decent, we can always come back and refine them afterwards. We are gonna move on to with the next texture set. So next were all the other house objects. So we're gonna start off with those roof panels. So what I decided to use were two textures that I downloaded from the Substance Source website. I used a cracked rusty metal material as well as a rusty drops metal material. And I decided to use both of those for my wood panels. Now you don't have to go with these obviously, you can use any of the built-in materials. I just thought these were pretty fitting, I really like the rust effect on them and it would just make my life really easy throughout this whole texturing process. Now I decided to use two different materials, that way I can have more variation on those metal pieces, but I did want the colors to be somewhat similar. So all I'm going to do is just assign one of those materials to some of the metal pieces and the other one to all of the other ones. It's just going to show a good variation on my roof and then I can refine those colors and the amount of rust afterwards until I find it fitting. All right, so next up is just more wood materials. So I just decided to keep reusing different smart materials to make my life easy. And all I really had to do is change the color and the orientation of all those wood grains. I just had to make sure that they lined up in the same direction of my wood panels. That way everything looked correct and everything flowed nicely. And same thing with the door. We're just going to reuse those same materials, but just change the colors so they're a little bit different than the floor and other wood materials. Variety is nice. We don't want everything looking too similar. All right, so I did the exact same thing to my window frame and to my small little planter below the window. I just assigned different wood smart materials, and now we can paint our small little plants. 
So like I mentioned earlier in the video, we are just gonna do this very, very straightforward. Since those UVs technically aren't even correct, we can't have any nice texture on them, like actual leaf patterns. But we won't really need that anyways, since we're looking at it at such a far distance. So I'm just gonna use simple plain colors and we can start filling in these empty meshes. All right, so the flowers are painted and things are looking a little bit more colorful. Now we just need to add some more dirt and grunge onto these wood pieces. Everything's looking a little bit too clean and just a little bit too perfect. So what we're gonna do is start adding on some different fill layers and we can add on some masking effects to add some dirt and grunge onto those materials. Now mostly what I was trying to achieve here was getting some darker colors between those small cracks. I want to really emphasize that depth and the different panel pieces. So if we can add some more grunge and dirt between those cracks and between the panels, just on basically more edge wear and more edge grunge on all of these little wood panels, hopefully I can make it look a little bit more beaten up and weathered and hopefully a little bit more realistic as well. And I also find you get better results by just slowly building up those dirt and grunge effects. So don't go all out with just one masking effect. I find it looks much more realistic if you can add more variation. And let's not forget about our small little objects that are in our scene that can easily be forgotten about. So that small little light that sits on top of our roof, the small chimney, and a few of the other small objects on the platform below. All right, so next up was moving on to the next texture set list, which was the tower texture. Now this is pretty straightforward, very similar to all the other wood panels in our scene. I'm gonna start off with a smart material and then we can slowly apply those to all those wood pieces. Now one thing I do need to keep an eye out for is the direction of my wood grains. I do want it to look consistent through all these wood pieces. So similar to the ones above, Every wood panel may not be the same direction on my UV map, so if that's the case, I do need to duplicate that same texture over and change the orientation of those grains so they run the length of the wood panels. Now we don't want to forget about our dirt and grunge, so very similar to all the other ones in our scene, we're going to add a few extra fill layers, add some masking effects, and we can add some dirt on top of this wood. All right, so the tower texture is looking pretty good. We can come back to it afterwards. We need to move on to the next texture set. So next up are the windmill components. Now these are all those mechanical components that are attached to the house. And I really love the idea in the reference of it being a painted metal. So the idea is that everything was painted nice, bright, fresh red at one point, all of the wood and all of the metal components. Maybe that was the theme they were going for. But over time, all of this metal has been weathered, especially being so high up in the air, all of the weather and all of the wind that just hits all the metal really just wears it out. So that's kind of the direction I was going for. So I'm gonna use one of those built-in smart materials that come with Substance Painter. And I'm just gonna basically find a nice metal wear that I find fitting. And then I can tweak those colors to make it a nice red. Now I don't want every component to be painted red, just those main outside ones. And everything else can just be a simple metal color. I know these pieces are quite small, so you're not gonna see them too up close, but I do wanna keep that same metal consistent material throughout all of these components. All right, so last but not least is our last texture set, which is the windmill blades themselves. Now this is once again very straightforward. All the other wood pieces are done the exact same. We're just going to use those smart materials and we can start filling in some of those empty meshes. Once again, paying attention to the direction of those wood grains so they run with the length of the wood, not the width. Now I was originally planning on having these little straps as some sort of cloth material, but I thought the duct tape would kind of be fitting and really stand out and it would just add a little bit more color or some different type of material to the scene. So I'm going to use that duct tape material that you can find on the Substance Source website and I'm going to apply it to those small pieces of tape. This windmill is a little old and janky so it needs a little bit of help from the duct tape. And then for the main cloth material on this blade, I just use that linen smart material cloth. 
I really like how you can see all those small little lines and the texture in this material and I thought it would just be fitting for this specific cloth. And all I'm going to do is just simply change the color from that gray to more of a beige color. And once again, let's not forget about that dirt and grunge to keep the whole theme consistent because of this windmill is a little bit worn out. So we're going to use a couple fill layers, add some masking effects, and we can add some dirt and grunge to all of these objects. So next up is just jumping into the renderer to take a look at these materials and see how everything is looking. Now one thing I do right off the bat is just remove that background image. I find it's quite distracting and I want to isolate those materials so I can have a better look at how they're looking. I'm also going to remove that floor since this windmill is quite high up in the air. We don't need any ground plane in our scene. Now I always find when you jump into the renderer, almost right away you can notice a few things that jump out to you that need fixing. So I tend to jump in and out of the renderer near the ends of these projects just so I can tweak things and finalize some of these materials. I actually find this is one of the most important parts of the whole texturing process is the end and the refining of all of these materials. For example, right here, I decided to add a little bit more color into those wood panels. So I'm adding a bunch of fill layers and adding very subtle purples and oranges and yellows, just so I can make that red material a little bit more interesting. Substance Painter makes it very easy to apply all of these materials, but the refining part really is the most time consuming. And I think it's the most important as those tiny small details go a very long way. So I'm just going to start tweaking some of these materials, adding some more grunge and dirt effects just so I can add a little bit more detail and then we can wrap up this model. So that is basically everything. That is the whole 3D modeling and texturing process that I did to create this small wind farm. I want to give a huge shout out to Hamish Freider who created this concept and this whole design that I based this week's video off of. So thank you for creating awesome art. And as always, I want to give a huge thank you to all of my Patreons. I can't thank you all enough for the continuous support. If you like this video, hit that like button and please consider subscribing to my channel. Also, if you're interested in seeing this video in a real time pace, which also includes the full process, including all the UV mapping, all of that will be uploaded to my Patreon page along with all of the working files. So if you're interested in seeing any of that, you can find the link in the description below. Once again, thank you all for tuning into this week's video and I will catch you guys in the next one.